Good afternoon, I'm Arnau Ramisa and I will present this talk called Using Depth and Appearance Features for Informed Robot Grasping of Highly Wrinkled Clothes. So, the objective of our work is to perform grasping of highly wrinkled objects uh, that are clothes and we want to perform an informed kind of grasping. So, we know where we are going to grasp the object from. Uh, grasping is a very important ability for domestic robots that have to perform tasks in unstructured environments and it mainly deals with computing grasp affordances with objects that we have detected in the environment. So if we have the 3D model of the object and we can uh, find the, the six degree of freedom relating that model that we have with the object that we have detected in the environment, we can know what is the best place to grasp this object from. Um, for textile objects, it is a bit more complicated because in addition to the six degrees of freedom for the pose, we have to account for the deformation parameters, which can be in a very high dimensional space and thus very difficult to model. Uh, current approaches to manipulation of textile objects usually deal with a series of regrasps to bring the object into the desired state and perform an open loop modification um, manipulation uh, task. Uh, what we want to do is uh, to propose a computer vision based approach that is able to shorten this manipulation time uh, by giving information uh, about which part are we grasping the object from. Uh, to do so we are using two sources of information, namely the, the color image of the object perceived per, uh, by the camera and the depth information acquired with the Kinect camera. Uh, for the color image, we will use a scale invariant feature transform or SIFT to extract information from the image. And for the depth part, uh, we will use the geodesic depth histogram or GDH, which is an adaptation of the geodesic intensity histogram or uh, GIH, uh, but only applied to depth data instead of intensity data. This geodesic depth histogram uh, amounts to computing or sampling points in equal geodesic distance curves around the point of interest. And it is the deformation invariant, so it's very convenient given our purposes. Uh, so the method we propose, we called it visual back, uh, back of visual and depth wars. And the steps are the following. First, we extract features, uh, local features from, from the image, SIFT and GDH features. And then we quantize them into visual works using words using a dictionary that we have previously learned. And then we have a bounding box sliding through the image. And at each step, this window, uh, this bounding box is selecting a set of, of uh, visual words that fall inside of the bounding box. And then we take these visual words and we quantize or we accumulate them into a, a histogram. That we feed to a classifier uh, that gives us the likelihood that this particular bounding box contains the part of the object that we are searching. We apply that same procedure to all the, the um, bounding boxes in the grid and what we hope that is that uh, when the, the bounding box is selecting the part we are searching for, the classifier is giving us a, a high score. So we can know that the, the part that we are searching for is there. Uh, as a classifier, we are using logistic regression that has the advantage that gives us probability estimates instead of uh, classifier scores. So we can combine all these probability estimates in a single probability map from which we can search for the local maxima and use, use it as initial detection hypothesis for the color, in this case, the color of the polo. Uh, then, we can feed these uh, initial detections into another step that uses a more expensive but better classifier, the chi-square radial basis function SVM, and we test uh, the detections with this uh, second classifier, and we test several locations around uh, the point of uh, that we have detected previously to refine the scale and the position of the detection. We do that for all the detections that we have found in the previous step. And finally, we can select the, the center of the final bounding box as the grass point uh, for our algorithm. Um, we also perform real grasp experiments with a robot hand. Uh, and in this case, in order to make sure that the point selected will be graspable by the, the robotic hand, 
we use a, a graspability measure that's based in in wrinkleness of the cloth or of the object. Okay, so in order to evaluate the the method we propose, we have acquired a data set of polos and other clothes, and we have manually annotated every instance of a collar in this data set with a bounding box. The the so uh, the hardware used to acquire the images was a Kinect camera hanging in the ceiling, as can be seen in the picture, and we have divided the the initial data set in three different subsets. The first one is called the blue polo, and from this one we used the 70% uh, of the subset for training and 30% for testing. This is the blue polo subset. Then uh, the next one is called uh, the others subset, and it contains images of polos and shirts other than the blue polo. And finally, we have another subset called the mixed that is much more difficult, and it contains uh, objects uh, with a color like the blue polo and other polos, and other objects that don't have a color like the the pants or uh, t-shirts as distractors. Uh, as evaluation criterion, we use uh, the following: a color a color is considered correctly detected if the grass point selected by the algorithm lies inside of the ground truth bounding box that we have manually annotated. And well, there are some results for the proposed method with this data set. Uh, each row represents a different subset. In the right, you can see images showing which training data and which testing data was used for each experiment. And in the left, you can see the true positive rate at different k uh, for the different combinations of features that we considered. In the left, we have SIFT, next GDH, and then combinations of GDH and SIFT with different vocabulary sizes. What can be seen uh, very easily is that the SIFT performed quite well. In fact, it performed a bit better even than the combinations. And it was able, using only the first classified window uh, of the image, so the highest ranked window, to detect a true positive rate of around 70%. So in 70% of the image, detect the correct position of the color for grasping. Uh, the combinations uh, have a very similar performance. And uh, the GDH perform uh, much worse. It uh, is around 30% in the case of the first subset. It can also be seen that the, as you increase the difficulty of the test data, the performance decreases. You can s notice the, the difference in scale in the y-axis. And in the case of the mixed subset, the performance drops significantly for all the combinations of, of methods. Uh, so these results are quite encouraging because using only appearance information we are able to detect correctly the grass point uh, in most of the cases and, and using only the highest classified window of the image. However, we are not taking into account the precision in this case. So another way to look into the results is using precision recall curves. Here we can see the precision recall curve for the first subset, the blue polo subset. And you can see again that the, the sift uh, alone is performing better in terms also of precision than the combinations or the GDH alone. But when we move to the other subset, the, the ones that don't contain the blue polo, the performance of the shift alone drops significantly while the combination remains more or less the same. It doesn't suffer so so badly from, from the change of the test set. So it seems that using the 3D information we are able to generalize a bit better to unseen instances of uh, um, polos or other clothes with color. And finally the mixed uh, subset, uh, all the methods perform quite worse due to the, the extra clutter in the images. So uh, the method needs to be made more robust to clutter uh, in order to be used in practical situations. Uh, so as conclusions, uh, we have exploited computer vision uh, to get better models of textile objects and perform informed grasping of based on parts of the of the textile object. We have shown that by adding depth information to our representation, we are able to generalize better to unseen objects. And we have obtained uh, about 70% of correct detections with the highest scored window only in each image, which is a very, a very good result given the complexity of, of the task we want to do. We have also evaluated uh, this method with real grasping experiments with a robotic arm with very satisfactory results. And as future work, we would like 
to evaluate other 3D descriptors or even propose other 3D descriptors in order to improve the performance of the combination of shift and, and 3D descriptors. And that's all. Thank you very much for listening.